Okay, this is uh, Scott Horowitz at NREL, and I'm going to be covering a few areas of this project. Uh, the first major area that I'm going to be covering is our work uh, to evolve the app uh, to be able to model existing home retrofits. Um, primarily, BEOPT was capable of, of evaluating new construction homes in the context of the DOE Building America program. And we made a big push in BEOP to uh, modify the, uh, the methodology approach that we use for new construction to be applicable for uh, retrofit analysis. There's a number of areas for existing buildings that are unique relative to new construction that we have to adapt BEOP uh, to be able to handle. Um, so I'll be, I'll be talking about that and as well as going over uh, some of the, the changes we made to the uh, technologies and, and measures that we ship in BEOP and, and how we do costing. So like Craig mentioned previously, uh, this is the splash screen that one gets when uh, starting up BEOP for the first time. Uh, it also shows up anytime you start a new project in BEOP. And so uh, by selecting this retrofit uh, radio button uh, and starting a project in this mode, uh, BEOPS will be tailored in a number of ways to streamline the, the process of analyzing existing homes. Um, and I'm going to go through that in a little more detail here. So this is a, a snapshot of all the changes that occur in the interface when one is in retrofit mode. Um, there's more changes behind the scenes in terms of the, uh, the methodology and how BEOP calculates uh, energy savings um, and does costing. But in terms of the interface itself, this is the various customization that occurs. Um, and so we have to deal with things like what is the existing building, uh, what are the options and costs that are presented to the user, uh, the existing building has, has, has uh, equipment already in the building with certain ages. Uh, so there's a question about remaining life on, on existing equipment. Um, there's some unique uh, uh, characteristics about HVAC replacements, um, as well as what your reference ought to be, uh, that, you, that you look at energy savings relative, and then some uh, economic considerations as well. So I'm going to walk through uh, just uh, a brief uh, series of slides to show how one would use uh, retrofit analysis mode in the context of an optimization. So the first thing that happens is when you're in retrofit mode, on this option screen, you get a new tab that says existing, uh, that you don't get in the new construction mode. And the idea here is that you would go through each of the, the categories on the left here and select the single option that describes uh, your existing building. And so, well, for example, here we are in the air conditioner category. And we specified that we have a SEER 10 air conditioner. And one thing to point out is uh, the SEER 8 and SEER 10 air conditioners are actually uh, new models that were added in support of the retrofit analysis that we have to go back and add in less efficient equipment and uninsulated uh, envelope components and things like that to be able to describe the existing building. So if you're in new construction mode, you actually wouldn't see the SEER 8 and SEER 10 because they don't meet the federal minimum requirement uh, of what someone would put in a new construction home. But they are available here for the existing building, uh, so you can select that you have a SEER 10 air conditioner. Um, you can also specify what the age of your equipment is. So here we specify that we have a 12-year-old air conditioner. Uh, this is particularly important because what it does is it tells BEOP that based on the expected lifetime of this air conditioner, which we default, we have default values and a user can change them uh, if they have uh, other data. But based on the default expected lifetime that we ship with BEOP, uh, we'd be saying that for this analysis, we expect our existing air conditioner to only last for four more years. Um, and that plays a really important piece in terms of uh, deciding what you want to do when it comes to upgrading uh, your air conditioner or even envelope uh, components as well as what the uh, cost effectiveness of those technologies will be. Um, specifically for HVAC equipment, we also have a drop down here to specify the capacity of your equipment. Uh, for the existing building, your choices are either to auto-size it, which is to say essentially that uh, 
you know, maybe this is more of a theoretical or uh, you know regional analysis where you don't have an actual size uh, system for a home. Um, alternatively, if you're in a specific retrofit of a home and you've gone in there and audited it and know the size of your air conditioner, uh, you can enter that in the drop down here. So that that would be the description of your existing building. And then the next thing that you want to describe is your reference. Now the reference is what is used to determine energy savings uh, of potential uh, retrofit packages. Uh, they are compared to this reference as well as incremental costs. And so in general most people would think that the appropriate reference for existing building or for a retrofit analysis should be let's say energy savings relative to the existing building. And that is what our reference is with a nuance to it, which is this with min replacement uh, parenthetical. Um, across all the categories, for the most part, the reference will be the exact same specification as the existing building. Uh, but in categories where we know that the existing equipment is less than the federal minimum standard, um, then we put in these mandated upgrades at wear out. And so what that looks like is that in our existing building, we had specified we had a SEER 10 air conditioner. In the baseline, the reference, sort of the, the do-nothing situation, the minimum that a, uh, a user or, let's say, a home uh, would be uh, um, being evaluated over time would be that at the wear out of the SEER 10 air conditioner, we have to upgrade at least to a SEER 13 air conditioner. So our, uh, energy, our energy consumption for our reference is actually the situation where we have a SEER 10 air conditioner for four more years, and then for the remaining uh, years of the analysis period, let's say it's 30 years, so the remaining 26 years of the analysis period, you would then have a SEER 13 air conditioner uh, in place. And we may have a replacement of that SEER 13 air conditioner as well out in the future. So BIOP is trying to give a reference that is fair um, with the idea that we know the existing building is not going to have a tier 10 air conditioner for the next 30 years, but we want to evaluate potential upgrades, you know, looking at a tier 15 air conditioner or a tier 18 air conditioner relative to this baseline scenario where there's this mandatory upgrade uh, in the near future. Um, again, this is, this is all up to the user. To, to specify when that upgrade will happen, you know, what the existing components are, et cetera. There's a lot of user flexibility here. Uh, but by default, this is the way that BAP tries to measure uh, energy savings and do the cost effectiveness in the context of this reference. Um, let's see. Uh, the last thing to point out is, again, in terms of HVAC capacities, uh, this drop down here, in addition to uh, previously I, I talked about the fact that you could auto size or uh, specify a fixed size, the default, refer uh, the default capacity for the reference building is to use the same as the existing building, which is to say that when the thir tier 13 air conditioner gets replaced at wear out, and perhaps subsequent tier 13 air conditioners when they wear out, uh, they're all going to be the exact same size as the existing air conditioner in the building. Um, that's sort of a con conservative look at things. Um, when you actually evaluate your designs relative to the reference, you can, you can evaluate uh, downsizing of equipment. But this is a, the conservative uh, reference baseline that we're going to use in BIOP. And then finally uh, is the optimization tab. Um, this is where you're going to select those components that you want to evaluate and let BIOP determine what is most cost effective. So you might go to the walls category and select insulating your walls, and you might evaluate you know, putting in attic insulation and sealing your ducts and so on. And so here you are in the air conditioner category, and you may evaluate these five air conditioners. Uh, for each air conditioner, you can evaluate whether you want to only consider putting in the air conditioner at wear out of the tier 10 air conditioner, or you can evaluate only looking at the air conditioner, uh, uh, putting it in today. Uh, perhaps you're looking at a retrofit package that you're going to implement today. Or you can actually let 
allow BEOP to evaluate putting in the air conditioner either at wear out or today. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility here about uh, sort of sequencing of technologies and when you want to evaluate them. Um, and then finally, uh, again for HVAC sizing, uh, you have the ability, like I said, to do auto sizing. And so generally speaking, this would be considered a downsizing, that you had a tier 10 air conditioner of some size. Um, if you make improvements to your building, then subsequently when you do one of these replacements of an air conditioner, uh, you'd be reevaluating what size that air conditioner needs to be with the, with the improved components that are in the house. Um, so that you can get some downsizing benefit. So if you had improved uh, uh, the walls, insulated the walls, let's say today, then when your tier 13 air conditioner gets evaluated wear out, uh, you're essentially able to get some downsizing benefit there that would be reflected in the cost. Um, so this is a quick, quick overview of, of how you uh, would do retrofit analysis in the context of an optimization. Uh, this is this is on the option screen, and then the only other real difference is here on the site screen. Uh, Craig talked a little bit about this. That this is where a lot of the economics are and the utility rates. And the change here on this screen is that uh, for new construction, uh, one has inputs related to your mortgage payments uh, and your mortgage interest rate and so on. In the context of retrofit, we've got some additional flexibility where you can evaluate either tax deductible loans a non-tax deductible loan, or even just a cash payment if you're paying for the retrofit package uh, up front in cash. Uh, so these uh, will play into, these inputs will play into the economic calculations that BEOP does for, for life cycle costing and ultimately find themselves, find their way into the, uh, for example, the, the output metrics in BEOP, like the cost effectiveness test for California. Um, lastly, uh, we've also, like I mentioned, had to expand our set of measures and enhance our, our cost, costing of measures. Uh, so we put in a lot of older equipment, uh, inefficient air conditioners and furnaces and appliances and so on, uh, uninsulated walls, ceilings, floors, single glazed windows. You know, these are things that typically you wouldn't find in new construction homes or in some situations don't even meet the federal minimum standard. And we've also more recently added some non-central space conditioning systems. Often you find those in the context of a, of a retrofit um, where, where uh, people, either homeowners may add like a window air conditioner or maybe there would be a utility incentive to put in mini split heat pumps, uh, that sort of thing. Um, on the costing side, we've had to handle the fact that uh, Retrofit labor costs are, are often unique relative to the labor costs for new construction. Uh, we, NREL has put together a national residential efficiency measures database. Uh, here's the link uh, where we publish uh, lots of measures across a range of technologies with standardized uh, properties as well as costs. And so uh, this is just a brief look at the, what the website looks like, where you can see a, a range of options in different uh, categories similar to what BOPT has, and you can drill into any one of them. So, for example, if you were to drill into uh, the walls uh, uh, group, here would be the wood stud walls situation, and you could look at, uh, you can do filtering, so you could filter on an uninsulated wall, and you could look at all possible uh, upgrades of that uninsulated wall. So here's an example measure where it's uninsulated with loose fill through the exterior. Um, and so you can see the properties of your uninsulated wall here on the left. On the right is, is where you end up after the retrofit in terms of R13 cellulose, its properties, uh, where it meets certain performance levels like ICC, and then most importantly, uh, the costs uh, assumptions in terms of a cost range and an average. And so uh, this standardized database is directly integrated into the BOPT application um, uh, and gets used in the, in the economic calculations that BOPT performs. 